You got two minutes of my time And I don't really break too easily But I'm worth it Cause I'll slip into your dreams tonight Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are doing well. Today, I'm just going to be talking to you a little bit about what is going on with my life. I asked y'all on Instagram, I'll leave my Instagram handle like in this general area um, if you guys wanna follow me there. Um, but I asked you on Instagram if you wanted a update on my life <laughs> because a lot of you have noticed um, that I'm home a lot more often and I no longer go to a corporate job anymore. And you are right, <laughs> I no longer go to a corporate job anymore. I left that job, which is crazy, crazy. Um, and I'm just gonna kinda talk to you about my journey. Um, I asked if y'all wanted to see it on Insta Stories or on YouTube. Slightly more people said, it on, said they wanted it on YouTube, which I'm kind of happy about because it just makes it a little bit easier. And I love YouTube, YouTube's like my, like baby, my first priority. So yeah, let's just go ahead and talk about it. Um, and if you have any questions that I don't cover in this video, feel free to ask me down below and I'm happy to address it in a future video. If you guys like Q and A's like this, let me know, I'm happy to do more. These are fun to film. Um, they're definitely not ever a high performing video, but they're still really fun and they're a great way for you guys to get to know me a little bit more and for me, for me to get to know you guys a little bit more. Sorry, I struggled to get that out. So basically, I worked in corporate um, since college and I graduated college in 2011. I went to school for accounting and from there I've always had a position, not always, well, let me back up. <laughs> so from the time that I graduated up until 2017, I always had a position in finance or accounting. Um, right out of school, I worked for the company that I had an internship with when I was at school that was up in Pennsylvania. And in that role, I was working in treasury, doing like balance sheet recs and like, um, like fraud auditing for a utility company that I worked for. And it was a good first job. Um, it was pretty laid back for the most part. Um, it wasn't exciting, like it got very old very quickly. And I was probably the youngest person there by like 25 years. Um, there was a very small community of, of um, yeah, like millennials, I guess you would say. Um, but the way that they did stuff was just so outdated. They were still printing out everything, like nothing, like a lot of stuff wasn't even digitized or I don't know what the right word is, but like, I don't know. It just, I didn't feel like I was getting anywhere and I was really tired of living in Pennsylvania at that point. I really, really wanted to change. And um, so yeah. Um, I worked there for about a year or so after graduation, so I lived at home, I worked there, and then I went to work for the company that I've been with for the past six years. Um, so I moved to New Jersey and worked for this other company, and they're a huge company. I'm kind of debating whether or not I should say what the company is. I think I'm not going to do that, um, but trust me, you've heard of them. Huge company, and I moved to Jersey. So in that job, that was also a finance job. I did that for about a year. I liked the job. It was flexible. We could work from home a couple days a week. The people I worked with were super, super nice. Um, but I didn't necess I didn't care for New Jersey. New Jersey was so expensive to live in. And it's just, the people I knew were nice, but just like other people, like, I don't know, it's just, I just felt like I was over the Northeast, I guess I should say. I don't want to be like, oh, I don't like anybody in New Jersey, because that's not the case. My maid of honor is from New Jersey, and she's the sweetest person in the world, but New Jersey just wasn't for me anymore. The Northeast wasn't for me anymore. I knew that my parents were eventually going to move down South, and I just had this desire in me to move down South. This is becoming like a career story, but I promise it'll lead to what happened. <laughs> but anyway, so um, all of these jobs um, at this point were nine to five jobs. So like you sit in a cubicle, you do your work, and then you leave 
around five or if there's still work to be done, you stay until the work is done, that kind of thing. So I moved down to Florida and that role was a little bit more intense. Um, it was in true commercial, commercial finance. So supporting business partners, supporting um, the marketing team of the company that I worked for. I ran a budget, I did their forecasting. Um, I also did journal entry. So it was kind of a hybrid between finance and accounting. And it was a high exposure role. It was very high pressure at times. There was constant deadlines, constant what they call, um, I'm already like out of it too long to remember what it was called. Fire drills, we call them fire drills. So like uh, something happens at the last minute and then you have to just like do an analysis like they want it five minutes ago and then like you know you get kind of ticked off and then you do it and then you get over it and I don't know. So anyway, I did that for a couple of years. I think I did that for three, four years or so, if the math is right, three, four years. Um, and the people I worked with in that role were super nice. Um, the finance people were, so wonderful, so friendly, and um, but I will say that it got to me at times, a lot of times, um, just with the stress and the pressure and just the overall environment that comes with working in a corporate setting and office politics. Um, if you know me in real life, I, and hopefully what you can see through, through my channel, I, I am I'm not confrontational. I don't like to pick a bone with anybody. I just kind of want to I want everyone to be happy. Like on all of those um we would often take those personality assessments to like work with one another better at work. And I would always come up as that person who was non-confrontational, who was positive, who like times like one of the my weaknesses is be is I could be perceived as a pushover because I just want to keep things harmonious <laughs> I guess I don't know if I'm saying that right and I don't want conflict and when working in that setting it's very difficult or at least it was very difficult for me to not take things to heart and not take things personally especially the budget that I was running at that time which was marketing and um you know what i learned a lot through that role i feel like i really did get i started to get thick skin i definitely don't have super thick skin right now i'm not gonna like sit here and be like oh my god like i can take anything like i can't but it definitely helped it definitely helped so um yeah i just i didn't i don't know <laughs> I feel like I'm like spilling all my secrets, but um, I, on one hand, I loved it because I loved the people I worked with. But then on the other hand, it was just a, it felt at times like a constant like punch in my gut. It felt like anytime something went wrong or somebody's budget got cut or, you know, one thing or another, it always felt like it was a personal attack against Vanessa. And it wasn't. And I know that, like standing, taking a step back and thinking about it, like it, it wasn't that. But it was very difficult for me to work in that environment day after day. And it was very exhausting and it was very toxic to me. And I just, you know, I kind of reflected on what do I want to do next? So, I had a couple of wonderful mentors and we talked about, you know, what do you like to do? What makes you happy? Like, what does your ideal role look like? And to me, it was a couple of different things. It was, I don't really like sitting in an office all day. I really don't enjoy, you know, being confined to a desk. I want to be kind of out and about. I do love to talk to people, but I don't necessarily love doing the budgeting aspect anymore i don't necessarily you know i kind of wanted to, to uh test the waters outside of finance as a bug i wanted to test the waters i wanted to see what else is out there what the heck <laughs> um and try something new so um looking through all of the different roles and i was trying to decide like what function do i want to go in and um, oh, I forgot to mention, I wanted something that was flexible, like, you know, 
Um, cause one of the things that I loved about the first job at this company back in a, back up in New Jersey was that we could work from home. And I loved the idea of just kind of running my own ship. Like I want to kind of like run my own business, but like work for a company. And that led me to sales. So I pursued a sales position and this took a while. It took maybe a nine months, which to me felt like a while at the time when I determined that I was ready to do something new. Nine months felt like forever. So eventually I got into this sales position and, um, you know, the, the person at the time, um, the manager was a great person. She was wonderful. Like she definitely cared about people. She wanted to do a good job, but, um, I think that the way that the job was described to me was a little bit different. You know, she sold it to me basically. And you know, it sounded great and I made my own decision too. Like I, it's, this isn't anyone's fault or anything. Like I just, I guess what I'm trying to get at is the job ultimately wasn't what I thought it was going to be. It wasn't exactly the way it was presented to me from the beginning. And I think after being in that role for two years, I'll kind of try to summarize it because I'm already at 11 minutes. Um, that role ended up being just not good for me. Um, the environment, like I thought that my last role had a toxic environment. Holy cow, like I did not know what I was in for. Um, and. I say this like and I feel like I need to put like a disclaimer after like every sentence because I don't want anyone to take this the wrong way if you're a salesperson that does not mean that you're mean that does not mean that you're pushy that does not mean that you're you know sleazy or sketchy absolutely not absolutely not some of my best friends are sales reps so I don't I don't think that but those are a lot of the qualities that I saw when working in that um, function and it just wasn't for me and it felt like again it brought out just like anxiety it brought out you know going into work every day and doing my absolute best you know some days I had a bad day so you know are there days that I was there that like was it my 100% best absolutely you know no it's not like that for anyone but by and large I would show up and try to do you know the best job that I could and there was just always something going wrong always something going wrong like there was um, whether it be like a leadership issue a management issue our team constantly being kind of dismissed for one reason or another there was just always an issue and um, it was a super toxic environment there was a super toxic just um, workplace because people were frustrated people were upset people were nervous like there were so many things going on that um, when you work in a sales environment, it not only affects just your um, job satisfaction, but it affects your paycheck because you're paid partially on commission. So this caused a lot of turmoil across the team and a lot of turmoil for me personally. And ultimately, I got to a point where I just told Steven, I hate this like I can't do this anymore this is not the place for me I'm not saying that the company is bad I'm not saying that um, I wouldn't enjoy working in sales again in the future um, but what I am saying is that particular role and that particular team at that time just was not the right fit for me and I couldn't do it anymore I could not do it anymore so I left which was so scary um, it was very scary to leave a good paying job um, at a company that a lot of people respect and I still respect um, and not you know it was it was just scary. I don't really know how else to say it. It's a leap of faith, but it was something that I knew that I had to do. And I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky that Steven is supportive of me because um, obviously it was a financial, it's a financial burden to um, not have me working there anymore. 
So, which leads me to what I'm doing now <laughs> at almost 15 minutes into the video. Um, now I am teaching online. Um, I am teaching English to students in China and I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it, you guys. It is the first job that I have felt just completely fulfilled in. There's not one thing I don't like about it except that I can't do it more yet. Um, it's just so wonderful. It's, um, so basically you, all you need is a bachelor's degree and I didn't, like I said, I went to school for accounting so I don't have a bachelor's degree in education or in English or anything like that. I just have a regular bachelor's degree and you pass a couple of certifications. Um, you do an online interview, like a mock class with somebody and they give you feedback. And there's just, you know, there's some quizzes and things that you have to pass. The hiring process took about two to three weeks. Um, and then I got hired and now I'm teaching almost pretty much every day. Um, I'm teaching a few hours a day. I would love to teach more. I would love to teach four hours, at least four hours a day. Um, you have to kind of be patient to build your book. Um, there's already a few students who have booked me out for several weeks because the classes have gone well. And there is something about this job that is so rewarding and I just love it so much. And I'll tell you, there is nothing like waking up in the morning, especially because this job starts early because it's on Beijing time, so I usually get up around 6 or so. Um, there's nothing more incredible than waking up and loving what you do. And that is a feeling that I haven't had in such a long time. And here we are almost 30 years old and I'm like figuring out what I want to do when I grow up so I'm really loving this job do I know if I will go back to corporate world if to sales I don't know I mean I definitely am still kind of I'm still open to it um, if the right opportunity presented itself um, but in the meantime I feel like I found something that I really really love and I'm also um, blessed with the ability then to have time to invest into YouTube and into my blog and to the things that I really, really love and hope to grow. So that is what I am up to. Sorry if you only cared about the last couple of minutes, but that's kind of the journey that led me to where I am today. And um, yeah, um, if you guys, if anyone is interested in learning more about teaching online, I had to do a ton of research. Sorry, I'm like clicking my pen, that's really annoying. If anyone's interested in doing it, um, I can't say enough good things about it. One of my friends is doing it too, so we talk every day about it. She tells me about her classes. I tell her about my classes. It's fun. Like, If you are a stay-at-home mom, I think that this would be an awesome way to just make a few extra dollars. Um, as far as pay, um, you make anywhere between like 18 and 22 to $25 an hour. It just kind of depends. There's a couple of different variables in there. Um, for example, if the student books at the last minute, then you get a couple dollars more. And um, each class is 25 minutes long and um, there's no lesson prep necessarily. They give you the lesson and then, um, you know, you can put use props and stuff um i can tell you all about it in another video or if you have any questions for me i'm happy to tell you because i know that everybody's gonna necessarily care about the specifics of it but if you are looking for something where you can work from home and be flexible and you don't like what you're doing right now like i was um i'm more than happy to help you because i know how that feels i know how that feels to to not enjoy what you're doing every day and this has just been such a blessing. So I'm so excited about what is to come. So anyway, that is it y'all. I hope you enjoyed my little life update and what I'm doing for work now. And I am about to film a power hour. So I'm gonna film that right now. And I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day and take care, bye. About to leave, already packing, come with me. I'm not really asking, we'll get away to a place where we...